blimey sides with Israel. The US has a UN veto power and always sides with the Israelis. Also, the Muslim world must recognise the right of Israel to exist. Muslims worldwide cannot point to dozens of UN resolutions against Israel and ignore the singular UN decision to create Israel, such as an act demonstrates similar hypocrisy to Israel's current opposite practice regarding UN. The ultimate aim must be peace. A major point to consider when it comes to peace is the two-state solution. This refers to a solution of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, which with two states for the two groups of people, it envisages an independent state of Palestine alongside the state of Israel, um, based west of the Jordan River. The framework of this solution is set out in UN resolutions uh, on their, quote, peaceable settlement of the question of Palestine, end quote, going back to 1974. The resolution calls for two states, Israel and Palestine, side by side within secure and recognised borders, together with a just resolution of the refugee question in conformity with UN Resolution 194. The borders of the state of Palestine are based on the pre-1967 borders. The latest resolution in November 2013 was passed, 165 to 6, with six absentations. The countries voting against were Canada, Israel, the United States, the Federation of States of Micronesia, Marshall Islands and Palau. The Palestinians have shown serious interest in the Stoops H solution since the mid-1970s and its mainstream leadership has embraced the concept since the 1982 Arab summit in Fez. Over the years, Poles have consistently shown respectable Israeli and Palestinian majorities in favour of a negotiated two-state settlement. There have been many diplomatic efforts to realise a two-state solution, starting from the 1991 Madrid Conference, there followed by the 1993 Oslo Accords and the failed 2000 Camp David Summit, followed by the Taba negotiations in early 2001. In 2002, the Arab League proposed the Arab Peace Initiative. The latest in in initiative, which was failed, was the 2013-14 Peace Talks. Extreme members of the Israeli government has envisioned a one Jewish state that would encompass all the land from beyond the Jordan River to the sea, as well as Gaza and what is parts of now Lebanon. The single Jewish state plan uh, was abandoned, abandoned by most Zionists and became apparent that the Jews could not be decisive majority of all Palestine. Though today settlers and right-wing Zionists propose various single-state solutions that all seek to maintain a Jewish majority in the land, either by expelling Palestinians or, deny, or denying or abridging their political rights. With Hamas, they've proposed a one Arab state. Um, this calls for a Palestinian Arab state in Palestine. This plan was put forward from time to time by different variants. Uh, all put to an end by Zionism and would not allow free Jewish immigration to Israel. After World War II, the Palestinian leader Hajj Amin al Hassini told the British that the Jewish problem in Palestine should be resolved the same way as it has been solved by Hitler in Europe by murdering the Jews. In 1967, on the eve of the Six Day War, Ahmed Shekhari, then head of the PLO, spoke at the UN given the Palestinian one state solution explained that, quote, if they are privileged to strike the first blow, end quote, the PLO would excel from Israel or Zionists who arrived from 1917 and create a secular democratic state. This secular democratic state became the problem of the Palestinian Liberation Organization and of the Fatah that sought to liberate Palestine from the Zionists by armed struggle. The Hamas and Islamic Jihad prefers an Islamic state in which the Jews and other religious minorities can remain as second-class citizens. Another proposal was by national state. Uh, this idea was advanced by Dr. Yedhu Magnez, president of the Hebrew University and a Jewish philosopher, Martin Berber. This state would have Jewish and Arab cantons, similar to the Swiss, German and French cantons. 
This idea was presented to the Anglo-American Commission in 1946 and was favoured by the MAPE party and by the USSR. However, the idea lost support after Arab states and Palestinian leadership totally rejected it. The bi-national state had a few modern proponents, including Meron Bevelinsky, Noam Chomsky and Edward Saad. Another one was the Alon plan. Israel general and political leader Yiga Alon formulated this plan for partition of the West Bank with part of the land to be returned to Jordan as a solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Israel PM Mechem Begin proposed that Israel would give autonomy to the Palestinians in a framework of the Israeli-Egyptian peace treaty. The autonomy would allow Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza to run their internal affairs, but would give them no rights all over the land and no representation as a sovereign state. This could have Jordanian or Egyptian leadership. A planned consistence with autonomy was submitted to the Israeli government in 1989. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Brief History Podcast. I've been your host, Andrew Knight, editing, music, composing, all done by Harry Edmonton. Uh, thank you once again for everybody who's reached out to us on social media. Um, please get in contact. Let us know what you think of the uh, the episode and the new direction we're going in. Uh, we really need your input to uh, to help shape this podcast. So uh, um, the, the more feedback you give us, the better. Please find us on um, social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or Snapchat. We're at Be History Podcast. Um, so like, share, follow, retweet, tell your friends, um, and uh, we can really grow this podcast. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please uh, give us a five star rating. Uh, leave a review, tell us what you think. It really, really does help, and uh, really appreciate everybody who's done so so far. So uh, please carry it on. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. That way you'll be notified when a new episode is released. Um, and like mine, it downloads it for me, so I don't need to do anything further. Uh, tell your friends, uh, we're on all the major podcast listening places. Uh, we're on Stitcher, Apple, TuneIn, CastBox, uh, anyone you can think of really. So uh, uh, thank you for listening and we'll see you next week. Are you looking for that certain special someone? Someone to share life's big decisions with? I am. I just don't know where to look. Don't worry. At Experian.co.uk, we've helped thousands of people find happiness by introducing them to their data self. I'm in love already. Find out how your data self could help you make better financial decisions. Meet yours at Experian.co.uk today.